In this video, we're going to take a look at pipelining. So as we learned previously in the last two videos, the CPU is given a series of instructions that are done in machine code. They may need to be translated, but we'll look at that later on. Now the CPU needs to ensure that those instructions can be carried out properly. Now we've already looked at risk and sys processes. So when it comes to actually building a CPU, we can either have a hardwired CPU, which has lots of logic gates, we associate this more with risk processes and then microprogramming is where you have an additional chip which can process that data that's where you might have something that could do a multiply instruction where a risk might do multiple loops of addition to achieve the same result now we spoke about instruction sets previously we already got reduced and complex instruction set computers however each of those instruction sets will have more than just the instruction set itself. You might have the format, how we address them, and what registers are used. But going for the example, we just need to know the difference between RISC and CISC. As I've already said, complex and reduced instruction set. CISC is easier to program, essentially, but uses more memory because it's got to do more work. RISC takes a lot more programming, but uses less memory. So CISC is more complex in hardware. It has more compact software code. But takes more cycles per instruction it has more instructions that you can be used it's microprogrammed but makes pipelining more difficult has a complex instructions and uses lots of general purpose registers whereas risk is much simpler but more complicated in terms of code because you have to tell it to do more it takes one cycle per instruction it has a fewer amount number of instructions it can actually do it's hardwired which makes pipelining easier and the instructions it can do are simpler such as adding subtracting, whereas you might have multiply and lots of more complex things. So pipelining, this is a key term we do get asked a lot of exam questions on. So this is a technique to improve performance. Essentially, we trick the computer, let's say, into thinking that it's doing multiple things at once when actually it's not. So what we do is we break down the stages in the fetch code execute cycle. So for example, we may fetch an instruction whilst the previous one is being executed. So it looks like we're doing more work, but actually we're not. There could be a program that has 10, 12, 15 stages in the pipeline. Some stages might take longer or shorter than others. So it's quite a difficult thing to manage. But putting it really simply, the idea is to make sure that everything in the CPU is working at once. There's no point waiting around for things to get done if you can get everybody working. The proper word is parallelism, but essentially we're making it seem like you're doing lots of instructions at once when actually you're just fetching one whilst the previous one's been decoded and the one before that is being executed. This diagram here is something that you'll get in the exam. So if we was waiting for each instruction to finish before the next one could start, you can see we've got five cycles to get A done, then we can start B, got another four, and then we can start C. Whereas if we use parallelism or use pipelining, once A has been fetched, we fetch B. A gets decoded, then B gets decoded, and so on. And it allows us to do something, instead of taking 15 cycles, it takes seven, so it's reducing the time. That's just an example, but you do get questions where you've got to fill in these kinds of grids, so it's useful to know. A really good analogy, and I do love an analogy, is like, when you're doing your washing, okay? I might put my clothes in the wash. Now, whilst my washing is ha hanging out to dry, I can put another wash on, and then once that wash is finished drying, I can then put the next load out to dry, and then put my next load of washing in it and keep everything going, okay? Although it certainly involves a lot more steps than just doing laundry, we can divide our instructions or divide the CPU into two sections. The front end, which is the fetching and decoding, and the back end, that executes and finishes off those instructions. However, if you do things like interrupts, which we're going to look at later on, if you are doing lots of parallel processing, lots of parallelism, then you're going to have to interrupt lots of instructions, which makes it much more difficult, especially in risk processes, even though pipeline itself is easier. And that is everything. We managed to get that done in less than four, uh, four and a half minutes. That's pretty good. Please like and subscribe. Please give me a comment if you've got any questions. I will be trying to put out, once I've got all the content done, I do want to try and make an effort to do exam question videos, but obviously it just takes time. So I'll see you in the next video.